to get eternal life, it will not come by the miracles you see on the outside. It will come by the miracle that's done on the inside. Yep. And what he was telling Isaiah is, you're going to be a prophet. And I feel the same sometimes. You're going to be this guy that goes forth with this message. And it's not going to turn me. You're not going to see great revivals and thousands come down the altar and you just count the head. Oh, look how many are getting saved today. Like these great evangelists make boast of. And some of them are being honest. Some of them are really, people are getting saved at the message. Some people are called to give a word and harden the people's heart on them. It sounds funny, but it's true. Jesus has given them chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. And then finally he says, go give that word. And this word it's not going to turn them. Their ears are going to go deaf and their eyes are going to go dim and they're going to take off. And I've seen it happen all through these years. And I've seen them grow bitter, mean, foul. And their countenance changes and they're gone. They don't come back. I'm not kidding. And that, it, it, it's still, he's loving, merciful, all merciful. But it's the people's heart. And that's what he was telling Isaiah. You're going to be sent to a people. And what your message is going to say is going to cause them to hate you. They're going to want to kill you. As a matter of fact, they did kill you. They put them in a log yep. and they sawed them asunder. Sure did. He knew it though, but he was willing to be used anyway. Y'all, we're coming to a day that those who have eternal life and the eternal majesty of the Lord is upon you and the Holy Spirit's living inside you, there are going to be times you're going to give a message to people and they're going to turn, they're going to gnash their teeth on you. And there's nothing, I mean, not even a miracle could take place in front of them that's going to change their mind from the way they feel. They'll stiffen their necks and they'll walk away from the Holy One of Israel coming through your mouth. It won't be you talking. And you might take it personal like, <laughs> Do I offend? Believe me, I take it personal sometimes. I mean, I was gone last week at the place I almost filled up. I come back and somebody showed up. And I said, what that good? Do I feel? Is it something I'm saying? No, it's not nothing you're saying. Sometimes people don't love the word coming forward. They just don't. You've got to be in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then when you see the majesty of Christ, the eternal life He's offering you, the eternal life that He's given you, you'll receive all of His Word. You'll take it and just want to devour it and put it in your heart because you know the holiness of God and He's offered you this gift of eternal life. There's no amount of any type of Word in this Bible that you will reject. It doesn't matter if it comes against your flesh in a hard way. You'll say, just beat it down. Purge me, Lord, with hyssop. Take the fire in your eyes and purge it through me. Leave me by the bit. There's times I pray, Lord, put a bit in my mouth, like James was talking about, and do something with this tongue. <laughs> and lead me. Don't let me get out of your will. Lead me like a horse. He said he didn't want us to be like that, but I said, I don't want to be like that either. But if I get back in my place, lead me by the bit. Don't let me run away. Amen. Don't let me fall away. Which brings me to the other place. That I've got to go over because we're here. Go back to John. <laughs> Eternal security. Because he says no man can pluck him away. Whew. I wouldn't even do it with the eternal majesty. I, I could talk about that all night. I think I'm going back to that. But go with me here to John chapter 10. And he says, verse 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. And I and my Father are one. This is the most comforting statement that you can have in your heart when it comes to being in the body of Christ. It really is. It's been taken out of context by many denominations and abused, but it's still beautiful. You can take this and say, it doesn't matter what Fred thinks about me. It doesn't matter what Susie says about me. It doesn't matter what Deacon Jones says about me. It don't matter what Pastor Darrell says about me. No man or woman can pluck me out of the hand of God. Maybe I have fallen short in many areas, 
Maybe people are judging me right now and I'm in a bad way. But still, it doesn't matter even if I'm in my sin and they're giving me a hard time. They can't pluck me out of the hand of Jesus Christ. We should know that. Because that right there casts out any type of fear in your heart. Let you know that you're saved. You are eternally secure. Your faith is in Christ Jesus. You're, I agree. I agree 100%. You are eternally secure. No devil in hell can take you away, can separate you from the love of God. Here is the quandary. We have free will. And the enemy knows he cannot take you out of the Father's hand, out of Jesus' hand. No one can. He and the Father are one, and they are greater than all. He knows this. So what does he do? He works on us to go into sin. Why? Sin can't separate us either. That's true because He's covered our sin through the cross. So it's not the sin. What it is, the sin hardens and hardens. And don't you think Satan is not a patient, patient, patient being? <laughs> He'll continue very subtly to cause you to live in sin or keep dibbling and dabbling in sin to where your heart starts growing hard towards being in the things of God are being in the spirit of the Lord's day. Don't make me not saved. You're still saved, but you start walking in the flesh. You know what I'm talking about? You're still saved. Walking in the flesh. Oh yeah. The flesh brings death, and it will bring death to your body. But your spirit and soul still saved. Nothing can separate you. Don't get me wrong. It's not the sin. But sin is the beginning of a hardening process that the enemy uses. And as he continues to harden and harden, and harden through whatever it is that we won't turn loose of, that we won't give to the Lord, a root of bitterness or whatever springing up, it says in Hebrews chapter 12, and defiles the whole person. Get it? Defiles? It didn't defile it at first. It's a root. But it springs up and eventually defiles. What it does is it causes us one day, after we stay in it and our hearts start hardening up and Satan blinds our eyes, we have the free will to walk out and to step out of the hand of Almighty God. That's proven by the scriptures. If you go, and not through you go to 2 Peter 2.20. That's why Peter talks about sin here. Many people preach it wrong and say, Whoop, if you're in sin and the rapture comes, you're saved. You're left behind. If you're in sin when you die, you're going to hell. All I can tell you, I don't promote sin. Sin brings death. Mm -hmm. And it brings death to your faith. That's what I'm saying. Eventually, sin will bring death to your faith. You will grow so cold, you don't feel it now because you're on fire. But you'll grow so cold that you'll put this down and you won't read it no more. You'll stop praying eventually. And eventually, you'll say, I don't believe Jesus is who he said he would. I just don't believe he's the Son of God. 